Hello, and welcome to another lesson on soundproofing. Today is a topic I'm super excited to talk about because I can't tell you how many people come to me and say, yeah, I'm building Soundproof Studio. Yeah, of course I'm using Rockwell and the walls. Don't worry about that. And I always have to stop and say, wait, 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 why are you using Rockwell in your soundproof walls? That doesn't make any sense. And it's become this common thing, like many of the stuff with soundproofing on the internet, that Rockwell Safe and Sound is like the end all be all soundproofing item that must be in every single soundproof studio or soundproof room build. And I'm here to tell you that that's not true. I'm gonna tell you as always why I think it's not true, use some physics behind it, uh, talk about the cost savings with why you should not buy Rockwell Safe and Sound if you're truly building a soundproof room and uh, hopefully convince you why how I can save you hundreds of dollars. So if you're interested in doing that, definitely stick around and watch this video. Before I jump in, if you're on this journey of building a soundproof recording studio or a soundproof room of any kind, I highly recommend checking out my free soundproofing workshop. This is available at soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That's soundproofyourstudio.com dot com slash workshop. All right, let's jump into this lesson on why you should not use rock wool to soundproof your walls. All right, the first reason is that soundproofing is all about the system as a whole. And when we talk about soundproofing, we usually talk about what are called assemblies. And assemblies mean like your wall, your floor, your ceiling, your door, your windows. Each one of those is considered an assembly. In this video, I'm gonna be talking specifically about your wall assemblies. Now, a soundproof wall functions as a whole unit in creating a soundproof barrier. It is not simply the insulation inside that makes a huge difference. To prove this point, I'm gonna show you a little bit about how a soundproof wall actually works. So let's take a look at this diagram right here. And you can see that there's various different wall designs. And we can see on the far right that our main double wall, the best type of soundproof wall you can build with two walls with an air gap in the middle, uh, gives you an STC rating of 63. Now, interestingly enough, if we look at the one that's the third from the left, you get an STC of 40. Uh, I point this out because it's the exact same materials just used in the wrong way. And the reason that you get such a worst STC rating is because you did not do the physics correctly. So our, our wall on the right uses what is known as a mass spring mass system. And this is how soundproofing really works is that sound waves hit the mass on one side of the wall. They enter through that mass, they're slowed down, they enter the air spring in the middle. So it's really crucial that we don't block off that air spring in the middle. The insulation inside there helps to damp that sound and turn some of that, those sound waves into heat. And the rest of that sound hits the other wall where it hits mass again. And hopefully very little, if none of that sound makes it through into your next room. And that's how soundproofing works. So the type of insulation you use doesn't really matter is the point I'm trying to make. What matters is the system as a whole, the physics behind it. So as long as you're using fiberglass insulation, it will do its job of turning that sound into heat. The next point I wanna make is an interesting one that I wasn't fully aware of until I started doing research on this video, but uh, Rock and Wool Safe and Sound, their product called Safe and Sound, which is what most people use because it does have a good acoustic quality. Uh, it has a high absorption coefficient and a high NRC value, which all means it's good at absorbing sound. So you might say, Wilson, why in the world are we not using it? And one of the reasons is that it's only made for interior walls and it doesn't have an R value. Now, if you know anything about insulation, the R value is important when we are trying to insulate our walls, especially exterior walls and attics, because this will help with climate control in your room. So for example, in my studio, we used R30 insulation around the entire building. And this is because all my walls and my ceiling are touching the outside walls. So when it's you know 10 degrees here in the winter, it's still nice and toasty in here. And when it's super, super hot here in the summers, it's still very cool in here because I have the proper R value and insulation in my build. Now this is something that you can look at at this chart right here. This shows you some different recommendations of R values depending on where you're building and what type of wall or attic you're using or a crawl space. However, I also recommend that you talk with an experienced contractor to ask them what they think in terms of the type of insulation that should be used in your walls if you are in fact insulating to help with climate control. 
Rockwell safe and sound, even the manufacturer does not have an R value. So they're not implying that it should be used for actual insulation purposes. They have several other products like Comfort Bat uh, that are meant to be used on exterior walls and help with insulation. However, I don't believe they have the same acoustic properties as Safe and Sound. So Safe and Sound is actually meant to be used in partition walls inside of your building or in your house to help with sound exchanges from say your living room to your kitchen or a living room to a bedroom, something like that. But it's not necessarily meant for exterior. So that's important it can't really be used in that sense, so don't use it. Now, one of the biggest reasons why I don't recommend using Rockwell Safe and Sound is because it's more expensive than its competitors. And like I said before at the beginning of this video, it doesn't make a big enough difference in that wall cavity when you are using a double wall system or a hat channel system, so using a soundproof wall system that is actually helping with isolation. I will say one caveat, if you're building a just a normal wall with no type of decoupling, um, you're not adding two layers of drywall, then yes, you could use Rockwell Safe and Sound and it will help that wall be that a little bit more, uh, have a little bit more sound isolation. However, I actually did this in my house where I have a washing machine and I put a partition wall and then I just did Rockwell Safe and Sound because it's not a soundproof wall. And you know, it's, it's pretty minimal. You can still hear the washing machine. It's just a little less loud. It's better than if there was no Rockwell Safe and Sound in there at all. So that said, if you're building a true soundproof home recording studio, uh, don't waste your money on this Rockwell stuff. Build the wall correctly, get that double wall system, get your STC rating up to 63 and save your money. So let me show you the difference in price here. So Rockwell right now at Home Depot um, costs 95 cents per square foot. And remember, it doesn't have an R value, so I found it a comparable insulation with a lower R value that you would use in an interior wall. And this is Owens Corning's Kraft R13 insulation. Uh, it's the pink insulation that we all know and love so much, um, but it's only 55 cents per square foot. So that saves you 40 cents per square foot, which may not sound like a lot, but once you start looking at the total square footage of your studio, it adds up. So for example, Let's take a 300 square foot studio. We're just gonna make it really simple. Let's say it has a 30 foot wall, uh, a 10 foot wall, and then 10 foot ceiling height. Um, so we have just really easy numbers. The total amount of square footage you would need to insulate that entire studio would be 1,100 square feet. Now for the rock wool, that would cost a total of $1,045 uh, to insulate that studio. For the Owens Corning Craft R13 insulation, it would only cost you $605. So that's a difference of $440. So you could save $440 in this hypothetical situation by choosing the cheaper insulation over the Rockwell Safe and Sound. Now there's not many places in construction, especially with soundproofing, where I say you should cut corners and try to save money by doing something wrong, but here's a place where I'm giving you total permission to save a ton of money and you're not cutting any corners. You're actually, your wall assembly will be just as good and the difference in insulation is negligible in the STC ratings. So, in conclusion, Rockwell is very good for acoustic panels. It's really good if it's used in your room to acoustically treat the room. That means reducing reflections in your room. However, it is not that effective when you are using a soundproof wall design and just placing insulation in the wall. So, keep that in mind. It's not very good for soundproofing. However, it is very good for acoustic treatment and acoustic panels. Remember that I think it is a waste of money for most of you out there and also be very careful because it might not meet the requirements of the R value for insulating your studio if you have exterior walls. So you need to make sure that you get the right R value for your walls depending on your exact building needs. All right, I hope this video was helpful. A quick short one on why I do not recommend that you use Rockwool Safe and Sound for your soundproof home recording studio or soundproof room. If you are on that journey, again, check out that free resource. It is a 45 minute workshop and it's way better than any YouTube video that I do. It just tells you everything you need to know in one cohesive lesson. So to check that out, just go to soundproofyourstudio.com workshop. That's soundproofyourstudio.com workshop. 
All right, I'll see you all next week with some more useful knowledge on soundproofing and room acoustics. Thank you.